Thank you, Jennifer. It's good to be together today. I know God has a word for all of us, so get your Bibles ready. There'll be a bunch of scriptures, something to take notes, write down. There's not necessarily points, so just be thoughts from God's word today, but I know God has something for all of us. But I will begin with Happy Mother's Day today. We have a lot of brand new moms in our church, and so uh, we honor our brand new moms and... <clears throat> Our nursery is growing, so if you want to, if you want to help, uh, you can sign up to help. Obviously, uh, anybody that works with our children has to go through a background check and an application process, but uh, we would love for you to, to help if you can. And so happy Mother's Day to all the brand new moms. Happy Mother's Day to the not-so-new moms. Uh, we honor all of you today. It's your special day. I watch the moms of our church, and they are special. Their love, their devotion, their sacrifice, all that they do, often going with very little praise all year except for today. Um, I just want to say that we honor our moms today. I also, uh, I am not uh, oblivient to the idea that there are uh, difficult uh, things that surround Mother's Day. I, I think of those that have lost their mom or maybe lost their mom recently or uh, just, you know, maybe have lost children or maybe wanted to be a mom. I know there's so much grief around this day as well. Um, and so I believe God has something for you today as well, that you are not forgotten. His word is for you as well. And I know uh, when my mom passed away, I, it was several years before I could even preach on Mother's Day. In fact, we were talking about my mom before service, and I'm like, let's just stop talking about her because i got to get up and preach today because uh, there's a lot of emotions uh, that come up on a day like today. But most churches will probably open the Bible to Proverbs chapter 31. And we're going to just look at a few verses from Proverbs 31 to begin today. Um, but uh, this is what we call a Proverbs 31 woman. There's even a ministry called Proverbs 31. And so here's, here's some verses from that chapter of the Bible. It says, she's clothed with strength and dignity. <clears throat> she can laugh at the days to come. She speaks with wisdom and faithful instruction is on her tongue. She watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children arise and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. That's, that's a high calling right there, right? That's, that's a high standard. But our moms, when you think about moms, we're in a series called Called the Courage. Our moms have to be courageous, right? And that's because moms are so good at one thing. Moms are so good at worrying. I don't know what it is. God, you just like, why do I worry so much about our kids? And here's a picture that will help explain what I mean, because dads don't worry that much. This is how dad sees it, how the child sees it, how mom sees it, right? Moms just worry, so they have to have courage. But we, we see some other things in this passage of Scripture, that, that moms are steadfast and strong and dignified. And some of you are saying, my mom's not that dignified. But dignified. She has wisdom. She works hard. She puts her child's needs above her own. And you think about all of that. And verse 17 of Proverbs 31 says, she sets about her work vigorously. Her, her arms are strong for her task. When you look at Proverbs 31, that is, like I said, a high standard. And, and, and it's a high standard for a hard job. I asked Leslie if she wanted to preach today, and she said no, so um, that's, that's your job, she said. So, <laughs> so I'll preach, but I, I picked her brain, and so a lot of the thoughts will be thoughts we came up with together, but uh, Leslie, before we got married, um, I mean, she, she was the office manager for the Coca-Cola plant in Wisconsin and ran it up there. Uh, she ended up leaving the corporate world to be a missionary for a couple years, and then she ended up at the Bible College where we met. And um, so it just, you know, and she, so she's had different jobs, and she says the hardest job she ever had was being a mom, that that's the hardest job. And the reason is, and, and once in a while I get, I get asked to speak at youth conferences, which I have no idea why, because I just, it's not my gift, but... When I go, I always tell the teenagers the same thing, and it's this, your parents have no idea what they're doing, right? I mean, 
let's be honest, parents, I, I know we have some teenagers in this room, they didn't come with an owner's manual, right? We didn't get a class. We had no idea what we were getting. I mean, no one should have ever given me a child. That's just, you know, it just, it just, it, but yet we have them, and, and there's challenges, and, and there's just, there's just, there's just hard things along the way in raising kids. And, and, and nowadays, Instagram does not help, right? Because you're seeing your real life and you're comparing it to everybody's perfect pictures and you're like, I, I have no clue what I'm doing, right? And, and, but that's not real life, what you're, what you're seeing. And, and so here's the first thing if you want to write something down. There's no such thing as a problem-free life. There's no such thing as a problem-free life. Now, that's obviously for moms, but that's for all of us, right? We live in a fallen world where sin is ruling right now, and Jesus is coming again. He's going to set all that right. But, but there's no such thing as a problem-free life. And so what we try to do, because we need affirmation, we go to Instagram, we go to these places, social media, we, we hang out with other moms. We try, to, we try to get that affirmation because deep down we know we could do a better job. And that's, that's true for all of us, right? Moms, yes, but dads, I mean, it doesn't matter. I mean, even, I, I hear so many people, well, I could have a better relationship with God and stuff. Like, I, I just feel like I'm falling short here and there. And, and listen, that's just how we feel sometimes. If we were being really honest, that's how we feel. And so today, I want to talk to you about seasons of grace, seasons of of grace, that, that, that listen, this is for moms, yes, but this is for all of us. We all have callings in our life. For some, it's new moms raising children. For some, it's grandparenting. For some, it's your job or where you work. Wherever you're at right now, that's your calling. That's what you're called to do. And for some, we're parenting parents, and we just, you know, we have all these different things going on in life, and, and we need grace. So as we begin, I'm going to talk to the moms first and just say, um, new moms, old moms, everybody in between. I shouldn't have said old moms. Uh, uh, I should have said not so new moms, seasoned moms, or whatever. Um, you're doing a good job. You are. I watch at church. I watch. You're, you're, a, you're doing a good job. And God thinks you're doing a good job, too because he wouldn't have given you those little ones if he didn't trust you with them. And he already knows you're human, right? He already knows you're going to make mistakes. It's, that's not the issue. He's with you. He's with you. He's calling you. And I just want to say this, that your kids are lucky to have you. They are. They just, they just are. Um, God thought you were the right mom for them. And so, uh, and God doesn't make mistakes. So, He's going to equip you, he's going to bless you, he's going to help you, and he's going to come uh, alongside of you because I know, listen, this isn't just moms, this is all of us, sometimes we feel weak. We feel like, I don't know if I'm doing this right, I don't know if I'm doing a good job, and sometimes we're weak. But Paul said when he was talking with God about something very personal in his life, in 2 Corinthians 12, 9, but he said to me, God said to him, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in your weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest in me. That when I'm frail, when I'm weak, when I make mistakes, he can be strong. And you can point your kids to Jesus. Like, yes, he is giving me strength. And in an imperfect, in an imperfect world, he's going to help you raise godly children. That's what God's going to do because he is present with us. Second, Corinth, Second Thessalonians, excuse me. 111, Paul again here, <clears throat> says, with this in mind, we constantly pray for you that our God make, may make you worthy of his calling and that by his power he may bring to fruition your every desire for goodness and your every deed prompted by faith. I love that verse because Paul's saying, I'm praying for you that God is going to make you worthy of your calling. That he, if he gave you children, if he gave you life, if he gave you whatever is in your hands, he trusts you. And, and he's going to make you worthy of that calling, and he's going to bless every step of faith you take. That's what that verse says. Every time I, I believe God, I believe what you say, your, every word you say is true, that he's going to bless that. See, the world needs you. 
Yes, you moms, but the world needs you. You were created on purpose for a purpose. And I want to tell you today that, 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 that you're called and God is going to make you able every single day of your life. That God is going to equip you and be with you every single day. Last week, Les and I were able to get away. Uh, our anniversary is this month, and so we, we worked out the calendar so we get away for about a week, and, and it was just good to be together. We're going to be married 29 years this month, and, and stuff. Thank you. That's, uh, <clears throat> I realize that's nothing for some of you, and that's eternity for others of you, but um, it's 29 years for us, and so we had that time together, and, and uh, we, we just enjoy being together, and so we just had a time to talk, and when we were talking, we were talking about the seasons of life, and that's what I want to talk to you about this day, the seasons of grace, and so a lot of these thoughts are actually from Leslie and, and, and I talking, but there's just different seasons in life, and this is really important to understand, that seasons change. The season you're in now will not last forever. Now, seasons are long because Things have to develop and grow, and sometimes they have to die, depending on the season. And, and so seasons are long, but once the season's passed, you never get go, go back to that season. See, winter's passed, spring is here, and, and so we're in a new season. And sometimes it takes a little bit longer, right? I mean, this year it seemed like it was cold forever, and you're just like, when's that spring coming? But the seasons do change. And yes, there'll be a winter that comes down the line, but that winter won't be the same as last winter. See, seasons change in our life. And we have to realize that the season we're in is for a moment of our life. It's not forever. And God is doing something in that season. Ecclesiastes 3.1, you could read the whole chapter, but I'm just going to read that first verse. For There's a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. And so we broke our 29 years down into three seasons, and so I'm going to talk about those seasons. And yes, they'll be in the context of motherhood, but really they're for all of us because they're different seasons in our lives. So when we got married, we had children, and so we're going to call the seasons the littles, you know, those newborns, toddlers, uh, you know, preschool, kindergarten, early uh, grade school, um, I call those kids cutie patooties because I see them running around the, the, the lobby and I'm like, these, these are just cutie patooties, right? So that's the, the first season of, of our marriage was with little children. And so that's when they say the days are long, but the years are short, right? We hear that said a lot. And sometimes those are difficult days and many times they're sleepless Nights, and here's the thing that, that a lot of times parents think about, new parents. It's like, am I doing this right? Am I, am I, am I doing everything that I'm supposed to be doing? Am I, you know, what's, what's going on? And, and um, many of you may remember a few years back, she kind of blew up and was all over TV and magazines and stuff. But uh, Marie Kondo, remember she did all the organizing and, and you know, uh, helped you simplify your life and the condo method or whatever. I don't remember what it's called, but she just like, she was just this organizing guru. You clean up all the mess and everything. Well, you haven't heard from her recently because since then she's had three children. And here, <laughs> this was in the Washington Post. This is the actual headline in the Washington Post. Marie Kondo's life is messier now and she's fine with it, right? <laughs> three littles running around the house. It, it, she's she, it's like, it's messier now, right? And, and I'm good with that. And, and what's interesting, if you begin to read the comments of this article, they start hammering her. They're, they're like, why did she give up? She's such a quitter. You know, all these things. And I'm like, <laughs> grace, right? Life gets messy sometimes. So we call it the, the little, but... All of us go through seasons where our life is messy. It's just messy. And we've, we've got to become okay with that messiness because it's a season of our life. It's, it's part of our life. And so I asked Leslie, what would you tell yourself or what would you tell the young moms? And, and she said this, give yourself grace. Give yourself grace. Give yourself more grace during these, these messy times. And that goes for all of us, right? Just listen, the house is going to be messy. Life's going to be messy. Things are going to be, it's just 
the way it goes sometimes. And Isaiah 41, 13 says, For uh, I am the Lord your God who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, Do not fear, I will help you. I love that. God's saying, don't, you don't worry about it. I've got this. I know life is messy, but you're not alone. You don't have to be afraid. I've got you. I'm holding on to you. And so what we've got to do during this season of life when it gets messy, we want everything perfect. We want, we don't, we want that problem-free life. But here's the thing. You've got to let go of perfection and grab hold of his hand. That's what you've got to do. You've got to let go of perfection, grab hold of his hand. And, 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 and parents, you've got to do this. And I know it's hard. And here's something I learned. Now, I'm not a grandparent. I'm way too young to be a grandparent. Um, <laughs> I'm just having fun. Um, but I, I'm in a small group with a bunch of pastors. They're about a decade older than me. Some of them are retired. And, and, uh, and we get together uh, a couple times a month. We talk about life. And these guys, all they do is talk about their grandchildren, Right? They're, oh, my grandchild, this, that, the you know, just talk about their grandchildren. I'm like, what's so amazing about grandchildren? You know, it's fun to watch Gary. Great to meet your grandson the other week. It was just cutie patootie, you know, just, and they just watch, you know, Gary beam, and all of us when we have grandchildren just beam. And I'm like, what's so special? Tell me, I got it. And, like, well, and it, I get the idea, like, well, you can have fun with them and take them on the parents. I get that. I understand that. But what is it about grandchildren that are just, you just, you just love that grandchild? And one pastor said it this way, and I thought it was so profound. He said, when I was raising my children, he said, I was always trying to shape them, mold them, discipline, just like make them good little humans, and I was trying to fix them. And he said, with my grandchildren, I just spent time discovering who they are. Like, what do you like to do? What do you like to play with? You know, and they, they get down on their level, and all they want to do is, is discover who that little boy or who that little girl is. Like, all they want to do is find out who's that little one. And, and it's not trying to fix it. It's trying to discover it. And I was like, that is so profound. What if I would have done that as a parent? And, and that's where I get convicted because um, Luke, we've, I've told stories about Luke, and I'm not going to go into any stories, but he was a difficult kid. There was a lot of challenges growing up, and, and I was always trying to fix him. And I should have loved him. And I always, I mean, I loved him from the moment he was born. Don't get me wrong. But love more than you fix. Stop fixing, start loving. And again, we need to discipline our children. We, 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 need, to, we, we need to guide them. Yes, absolutely, that's your call as a parent but love them because God created them a special way. And I love how Luke turned out. All our boys turned out. I mean, I'm, I'm grateful, but I would, have, I would have probably spent more time discovering who God made them to be rather than trying to fix them. So, so love your kids. Love your grandkids and, and show them the way because we all need that kindness. We all need that encouragement. <laughs> this week when we were traveling, driving through rain, <clears throat> and uh, the windshield wiper on my car broke. You know how you get that little rubber flap, and so I wasn't clearing the windshield. And um, so look, we Googled, where's the nearest auto, you know, parts store, pulling the, pull the lot, and I go in and buy my windshield wipers. And um, I'm a little nervous buying them because I, I just break things. I'm not good with my hands. I break them taking them off. I break them putting them on, and they're not cheap. And I'm like... I've watched YouTube videos. I've tried to figure it out. I know some of the men in the congregation are now cringing, like they're going to take away my man card after church. I get it. I'm just not, I'm just being honest. I'm not good at that. And so I bought these expensive windshield wipers, and this, this big young guy behind the counter, and he looks like a car guy. I'm like, I said, I hate to ask this, but would you come out and put this on my car? And um, I was oh, sure, absolutely. And he grabs him. We're walking out to the car, and, and I just, I'm feeling like, just like this little, I, I don't know how to fix the wind. I don't know how to change. And, and I said, you know, I'm really sorry. I'm just, I'm not just, I'm not, I'm, I'm making all these, I'm not good with my hands. I'm not good at this. And he stops, and he looks at me. He goes, that just means you're better at something else. 
I was like, I'm not trying to be funny. I went from here to, I mean, it was like, it was just, it was so, just this young guy. He said, well, that just means you're good at something else. I'm like, dude, come and preach at my church. You know, just like, no, it's just like, I mean, maybe he was a believer, I don't know. But the point, the whole point is like, that didn't cost him anything. And it changed my day. It, 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 it just, you know, to this moment, it's just like, I oh, you're doing other things. I love that. And so encouragement's free, so why not give it to your kids, right? Why not give it to your spouse? Why not give it to one another? It doesn't cost anything, and it'll change their life. We all need encouragement, right? So, so stop fixing, start giving encouragement. Now, the next stage in life for us was adolescence. Um, so they, they grew up to that preteen, teenager year. We call that the not so cutie patootie years. Um, yeah, so uh, those have sleepless nights, but for other reasons. Um, uh, teenage angst, rebellion, testing boundaries, they're just growing up, right? They're just, that's just life, right? They're, they're growing up and they are. Man, everything's a fight, and it just gets rough. And so Mark Twain said that when a child becomes a teenager, uh, you should shove them in a barrel and, and put a lid on the top with a hole in it, and you feed them through that hole. Then when they're 16, you plug the hole. Um, <laughs> and if you have challenging teenagers, you're like, that sounds like a really good idea. But obviously, that's, that's not an option, but they're... We'll call that season difficult seasons in life, right? So we have messy seasons in life, and, 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 and we got to get comfortable with like, okay, this is a little messy, but God's with me in the mess, right? I, it's okay. It's all right. Um, and then there's difficult seasons of life where everything seems to be a fight. It's not about cleaning up anymore. It's about battling. And, and so you have this moment, these difficult seasons of life. And so how do you get through the difficult seasons? And so we talked, and we were talking about raising teenagers, but also just about life, that, that when you get into a difficult season, that's when your prayer life should just skyrocket. Now, obviously, you're always praying for your kids, but, but, but during difficult seasons, pray more. Pray more. And here's, this is so important for difficult seasons in your life. Choose your battles. Because when you're in a difficult season, it feels like everything is a battle. Right? You've got your fit, like every, you're just, okay, I'm going to make it through this time, and everything becomes a battle, and not everything's a battle. You've got to realize that, especially with your teenagers. Not everything's worth fighting about. It's just not. Right? Choose those battles and choose them very carefully. Allow the Lord to lead you. Because listen, your teenagers have a lot of difficult things going on in their life. There's a lot of changes going on, and they live in a very different world than you and I lived in. And they're, they're going through stuff that, that we need to pray them through. And, and you got to tell your teenager, hey, man, we're a team, okay? I'm your first call. I love you. I've got you. You know, we got to have that open kind of dialogue, that communication, and just and be, be, listen, right? Just listen. Listen to their heart. Listen to what's going on. Show up for them. Keep showing up. And, and this teamwork isn't just, just for you and the kid, it's for you and your spouse if you're married, right? And let me just say, if, if you're a single parent here, I've watched you, and God bless you, because, man, you're bringing your kids to church, you're in the right place, and you're doing a hard job, and I applaud you. I applaud you. And sometimes it feels like there's no one on your team, but I'm going to tell you, there's people all over the sanctuary that will be on your team. You just ask. You just ask for help. We're here. And, and, and you're a team. You're a team with your kid. You're a team with your spouse. Because the, the, the enemy divides. God unites. God is a God of unity. We, when you look even out in the world and society, what is the enemy trying to do? Divide. God is a God of unity. And so don't get caught up in that battle of dividing, okay? Don't, don't divide. Unite. And so you're a team. And don't do it alone. I saw a book while we were gone. I love it. Um, don't mom alone. Don't mom alone, and you don't have to mom alone. You don't have to do life alone. That's what the body of Christ is all about. Now, there are going to be some things that you want to deal with, and so Leslie keeps a very clean house. Um, so I'm always like, just come on over. Just, and she's like, no, i got to clean. I'm like, what are you going to clean? Like, 
You're going to clean the clean? I mean, what? You know, it's like, she's, she's just clean. I'm messy. And unfortunately, the boys inherited my messy gene, uh, not the clean gene of their mom. I'm sorry about that, honey. But, um, but uh, the boys had messy rooms, okay? They, they just, well, Mark doesn't. Mark keeps a very good room. Maybe it was the other two. But anyway, the point is messy rooms. And so Leslie, one time, she asked a, an old, wise woman in our church who had boys that were already raised and um, just said, what do you do? Like, how did you do it? How, you know, how do you, when, when they just won't clean or you try and they just, it just, how, what do you do? And this advice changed Leslie's life. She said, just do this. Just close their door. Yes. <laughs> Just close their door. Life changing. It was life changing. We have more closed doors at our house than. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> No, if no, just, just having fun. But yeah, just close the bedroom door. That's all you got to do. Because listen, the Bible says this. Jesus says this in Luke 12, 25. Who of you by worrying can add a single hour to your life? Since you cannot do this very little thing, why do you worry about the rest? Okay, if, if worrying isn't going to change it, listen, parents, if yelling isn't changing it, stop yelling. If what you're doing isn't working, something needs to change. Here's the best thing. Pray, pray, pray. God, I need wisdom. God, I need... Because again, the enemy's there to divide. The enemy's there like everything's a fight. Nope, not everything's a fight. There are things worth fighting for, but, but not everything's a fight. So pray, pray, pray. In those difficult seasons, pray like you never prayed before. And remember, it's just a season. It might be long, but it's just a season, all right? So that brings us to our third season in life, and now adult children. So in, in a few months, we will no longer have teenagers anymore. They'll all be uh, men in their 20s, and uh, that's weird. Um, but also, uh, I, I told Leslie this on the couch one night, it's like, you know, because, you know, Mark is growing up, we'll be out of the house soon. When are you moving? I'm just kidding. Um, I'm, just, I'm just having fun. Empty nesters, yes. No, um, I'm just having fun. I love, love having Mark at home most of the time. Um, I love Mark. Um, but I, 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 we were on the couch, and I, I, I told Leslie, um, I think I finally figured this dad thing out, and they're all grown up. Like, I, I fin I'm thinking I finally figured out what I should be doing, and, and they're not here anymore. And, and maybe that's why grandparents and granddads and grandmothers are so awesome. I don't know, but here's what we learned about adult children is, is you got to let them go. You got to let them go. Now, you're going to love them, and you're going to support them, and you're going to always be their parent, but you got to let them go. Now, here's what you do. You let them reach out to you. Say, hey, you got my number. I'm your first call. You need anything. I am here for you. Now, if they just ghost you and disappear, then you can reach out to them. Um, but, but let them go. Let them go. Um, actually, I'm, I'm not sure about any of this because we're just starting this, so I might change this message in a few years. I don't know. But, but so I'm going to call this the season because these are seasons in our life. There's sometimes a season of life where you just don't know what to do. You just don't know what to do. It's a new season for us. I, I don't know what to do. Um, Mark asks a lot of times, well, what should I do about this? And it's like, I, I don't know. I've never been in this spot before. It's like, I don't know what to do. And so what do we do when we don't know what to do? The Bible says, ask for wisdom, and God will liberally give it to you. So we, we ask for his help. And, and while we let them go, we are still present in their life. Okay, listen, it's so important. Be present in their life, not omnipresent in their life when they're adults. You got to let them go. I had... 
We had to let one son go. But we talk all the time. And we go out to eat. And, um, yeah, I just, you know, I love him, and I always will. And just, but you got to let him go. I, I learned as a youth pastor many years ago, and I, I knew this, like I knew it, but now I know it, and, and that's this, that I watched youth pastor here many years before pastoring, and, and I watched, we would give ourselves to kids, like just just pour into kids, and they would, they would follow God, and there's wonderful testimonies, even in our congregation today, of kids in the youth group that just are living for God, and you just pour your life into them. And then there were other kids you would just pour your life into them, maybe even more, and they would just make decisions that you're going, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? Because they, got, they get to make a choice. Everybody gets to make a choice. And I realized very early on, even before we had kids, when I was a youth pastor, it's like, Everybody gets a choice. I can't make that choice for them. You can't control anybody. You can't make choices for them. And, and, and there were other people that came from great families that, that ran from God, other people that came from horrible families that lived for God. There was, it's just like everybody gets their own choice. And so if I had to do it over again with kids, I would, I would I, and I, I've, I've recently talked to Mark about this, it's like you, this faith has to be yours, not mine. This faith has to be yours, and I'm, I'm so thankful Luke chose that faith and is following that faith, and Mark is doing that. I'm so proud, but, but everybody gets their own choice, and we don't control our kids. We let them go, and, uh, you know, there's a lot of things like, well, I wish we could do this and that, and we wish I would have done that, but you know what? It's a season, and it's not over, Right? So, so even this season may pass, but it's, it's never over. And listen, seasons are long. Sometimes it feels like, I don't know if this is ever going to change. I feel like my life has been messy forever. I feel like it's been difficult forever. I feel like I don't know, the I don't know seasons seem very long. And it's like, I, when's it going to change? I don't know when, but listen, seasons do change because God brings you into new places. And, and, and we even heard the word of the Lord, he's taking you to a new level. And listen, I'm going to tell you that, that God is with you every step in every season. He's with you in every step of every season. And it can be easy to go from one season to the next and then beat yourself up about the previous season, like, well, I should have done this and I should have done that. And, and that's where we have grace because we do make mistakes along the way. But you know what I love is every time I open my Bible, Romans 8.28 is still in there, Right? What does it say? We know that in all things, all things work together for the good of those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. So God's got this. He's got this season. You're in that little season or you're in a messy season of life. God's got you. You got, you got adolescents, you got teenagers, and you're pulling your hair out. You know what? You're in that, that fighting season. God is with you. You're in that season where you just don't know what to do. Like, maybe you're in the little season, and you're like, I don't even know what I'm doing. God is with you. You are never, ever alone. And listen, so moms, you got this because Jesus has got you. Amen. Right? Everybody, you got it because Jesus has got you. And he's the God of mercy. You know when he describes himself throughout Scripture, the number one refrain about Jesus, or excuse me, Jesus, Yahweh, God, in the Old Testament, he's being described, and I'm just going to read it from Psalm 103, verse 8, but this is throughout the entire Old Testament over and over again. It's this, that the Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. You know, we, we, we rush in our minds that God is a God of judgment, and I made this mistake, and I wish I could go back to that season and change it. When God describes himself, he does it over and again. I'm compassionate, I'm gracious, I'm slow to anger, abounding in love, I'm forgiving. That's God just, I'm a God of grace. You, you say, God, give me mercy. God desires to give you mercy, not judgment. God desires to give that to you. And so here, write this down. Give, your more, give yourself more grace because God does. Give yourself more grace, God does. <laughs> Listen, stop beating yourself up. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. 
The enemy's going to use it, that I messed up in this season, or I messed up in that season, or if I would have been a Christian earlier, or, or if I would have done this with my kids, it would be different. Listen, give yourself grace. God does. And listen, it's not over. It's not over. Seasons change. God is with you. Proverbs 31, uh, 30. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. You look at that verse and seasons change, right? Charm, beauty, things. They, they, every, seasons change. You know what doesn't change? God is with you. That the fear of the Lord in your heart, like that, that he's holding your hand, that he's got you. That's true of every single season of life until you're with him forever. Isn't that awesome? Like, like charm is deceptive, beauty is fleeting, but a woman, a man, anyone who fears the Lord is to be praised. That's what it's all about, right? Amen? Amen. Bow your heads with me today. God, I'm so grateful that you're with us. You're with us today. Lord, there are so many different seasons in this room, watching online. We have teenagers who are just beginning a life. We have brand new moms, dads. We have those that are in the midst of the teenage years or wrestling with what it means to have adult children and, and grandchildren. And Lord, we, we just need you in this season. With your head bowed and your eyes closed, I'm just gonna, I just want to talk to you for just a minute. You're, you're not going to make it without Jesus. Maybe you came to church today because it's Mother's Day. Listen, I'm glad you're here. Thanks for making Mom happy. But you were here because Jesus is here. And your mom wants you to know Jesus. Maybe you're here and, and mom wasn't a good mom. I, I don't know. I had a great mom, great grandmas. My wife's a great mom. My sister's a great mom. I'm surrounded by great moms, but I need Jesus. You need Jesus. We all need Jesus. It, it doesn't matter. Jesus' love never fails. His forgiveness is there. His grace is there. It covers every mistake. In Jesus, there is no more judgment. There's forgiveness. There's grace. There's compassion. There's help. There's strength. I'm going to ask you to bow your knee to Jesus today. I'm going to ask you to, to surrender your life to him and just stop doing it your way and start doing it his way. And and keep coming back to church. Keep learning more about. We talk about the Bible every week and just dive into his word. Ask for him to help you. He will help you. Everyone else may forsake you in life, but Jesus will never forsake you. He loves you. He's got you. Jesus, I just thank you that, um, Lord, I, I, I know most everybody here knows you, loves you, walks with you. Um, but Jesus, sometimes we get discouraged. Sometimes we're wondering if we're doing this right. And, and Jesus, thank you for your grace and your love and your mercy that walks through us. And Lord, even though we do make mistakes, somehow you turn it around for good. And God, I'm so grateful for that. Jesus, thank you that we're never alone. Thank you that we can always ask. Lord, teach us what battles to fight and what not to fight. Teach us what we need to know when we don't know. And Lord, if life is just messy right now, let us... Get comfortable in the mess and, and know it's okay sometimes. Because Jesus, you're with us in the mess. You're, mis you're with us in the midst of a fight. You're, you're in the midst of us when we don't know what we're doing. <laughs> God, thank you for that. Thank you that you're always with us. Lord, we just pray that you would go with us today. and Lord, that every mom would feel honored. Lord, if there's a single moms in, in the place today or watching online and and no one's going to buy them a gift today because the kids are too small. And Lord, let them know that they're loved. 
that they're doing a good job, that you've called them to this moment and you'll never let them go. Jesus, thank you for being with us. Thank you for being omnipresent and always with us. Um, we're so grateful, God. Thank you for your word today as well. We love you. We honor you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God is good. He's so good.